Now it's time to take a closer look at the objects. Notice how they conveniently surround the string. Object 1 is above it, Object 2 is over to the right, and Object 3 is below. It's important to notice that the objects share a lot of the same controls. The control in the center is the strength control. Sculpture uses the generic term strength because it can mean a lot of different things depending on the objects that you're using. Now as you increase or decrease the strength control, that orange band associated with the object as it crosses the string changes its intensity also. Watch, I'll do the same thing with object 2. And object 3. Sculpture gives you a good amount of graphic feedback so that you can better analyze how you're affecting the sound. Now the next control is the timbre control. Every object has a timbre control slider on the left side of the strength control. To move it, you click hold right on the timbre control and move your mouse up and down. Now timbre is a generic term for tone color that will take on a more specific meaning depending on what type of object we're disturbing or exciting the string with. There's another set of controls called variation controls, which will also affect the tone color, and they too are specific to the type of object. The next control, velocity sensitivity, determines how the object reacts to MIDI velocities. Notice that the third object doesn't have a velocity sensitivity control, and that's because each object is a little bit different. For instance, object one just has exciters. Whereas object 2 has the same list of exciters to choose from, plus another bunch of disturbers, and the possibility to bring in an external exciter. Now object 3 has no exciters at all, just disturbers. That's why it doesn't have a velocity control. It has nothing to pick, blow, or strike with. Let's take a deeper look at these exciters and see what their strength, timbre, and variation controls do. On the right, you'll see a list of all of the exciters that are available to you in Object 1. The Impulse Exciter is the most generic of all of the exciters. The Strength Control controls the strength of the amplitude of the impulse. The Timbre Control controls the width of the exciter. And the Variation Control controls the intensity. Now, the Strike Exciter is very much like a piano hammer or a mallet. The Strength Control changes the speed, the timbre control changes the mass, and the variation control changes the felt stiffness. Now a gravity strike is a little different in that it allows the hammer to bounce on the string a little bit after the strike. The pick control is like a guitar pick, and you can control the force and the speed of the picking and the actual stiffness of the pick or plectrum itself. You can also drag something across the string with a regular bow or a wide bow and you have control over the bow speed, the amount of force or pressure on the bow, and the slipstick excitation, which is the type of excitation that bows create. The noise exciter is a little more abstract. Think of it as stimulating the vibrating object with a noise source. And with the blow exciter, you have to think of the vibrating object or string as more like a column of air. And as you blow into it, you're exciting that column of air, just as you would by blowing into a flute. Now I know this is a lot to digest, and I don't expect you to understand it right away, but if you take a screenshot of these definitions, you can bring them up later on and use them as a reference. Now Object 2 is just like Object 1 in that it has all the same exciters, but notice at the bottom of the list there's another exciter called External. This enables you to bring in a sideband from any of your logic tracks to use as an exciter, and it's only available in Object 2. Object 2 also can be a disturber. Disturbers interfere with the vibrating object. The first disturber allows you to put an imaginary object a certain distance from the string. You can control the hardness, the distance from the string, and the width, the size of the disturber itself. Disturber number two is similar, but instead it puts a ring around the string, and you have control over the hardness of the ring, and how much clearance there is between the vibrating object and the ring. Now don't get frustrated by moving the variation control up and down and not hearing anything. The variation on disturber number two does nothing. Imagine pouring a case of ping pong balls inside of a piano 
That's what bouncing sounds like. And with this disturber, you can control gravity and the stiffness and damping of those bouncing objects. Bound stands for boundary, and you have to think of it as kind of like a fingerboard of a guitar. And when a vibrating object touches it, it kind of buzzes a little bit. You can control its distance, its slope, and its reflectivity. Now the mass object is really cool. It's like attaching something to the vibrating object, which is great for creating inharmonic sounds. Notice that the timbre and variation control do nothing. The last disturber is the damping control. You can control its intensity, its character, and the width of the damping object itself. That covers all of the exciters and disturbers. Object 3 only has disturbers. Object 1's specialty is being an exciter. It doesn't have disturbers. Sculpture gives you visual feedback of which objects have exciters and disturbers by the location of their handles on their position sliders. You see, Object 1 only has a handle above the string. But Object 2 has both the choice of exciters and disturbers. That's why Object 2's slider has handles above and below the vibrating object. Now Object 3 only has disturbers. That's why its handle is located below the string. These handle locations have nothing to do with the excitation or disturbing process. They're just there to give you some visual feedback. So in the next chapter, we're going to look at the material pad and its set of complex controls.